This is an array mock test. If you're doing grade 11 RT, we can practice some arrays. And we have done four questions. And we're doing the final question now of this mock test. So let's go right down to question five. Let's scroll all the way down to number five. OK. So in the previous question, so you know, we loaded the values from a text file called players.txt into an array called array players. And there is an R array player count values in that text file. And the reason why I was speaking about question four is because we need to use that for question five. So question five says we must sort the players in ascending order in the array players array. And once a sorted, a suitable message must be displayed to let the user know that it's been sorted, it's been completed. Okay, so we need to display the array. Okay, so that's to say that it's been sorted. I don't actually say anything about displaying it, but I'm going to display it so I can see that, the result, that it does display correctly. And they want me to sort it in ascending order. So that's a key thing to take note of. And they don't mention anything about what so the array contains the name of the players and then the team name. So they don't say sort by the team name because that would be a different type of uh, algorithm we, or a different uh, spin on it. We need to extract the team name and then check that. Um, but in this case, it's just sorted by whatever the value is. So sorted by the names. And what's nice, they've given me an option. Here. If you made a mistake with question four um, and you couldn't get up, array players working then what you could do is if you couldn't complete it there's they've given you a second an array that you could use instead for this question if by some reason you at least you could test it then um, so they tell me that this is an option so if we go to the program here you can see there's the array that we're dealing with we're going to assume that it's populated correctly because we did our question four correctly but if you did make a mistake with question four you can then just use this array and it still hasn't got everything in it but at least it's got something that you can work with and test your results okay that's very sweet of them to do that Okay, so let's do a sort players. So I'm going to actually do a few sorts here, but let's go into it. So first of all, to sort an array, there are a few algorithms that you need to know, or one particular. Um, I've done some videos on sort arrays, so go look them up. Um, I have a summary here of the selection sort. I like the selection sort purely because it's easier to remember. Um, so there's the algorithm for the selection sort. So so if you're not too sure about it, just memorize it. So in an exam, when you see the word sort, you can just type it in and get uh, enough time to you scoring yourself extra time to work on the question that you need to think about. You just if you know how this works, you can just believe it and just memorize it and then you can apply it to your program. So we're going to have two loops with the selection sort. So I'm going to have two variables. I'm going to use R. No, let's keep them capital so I can see the difference. K, L, and they're going to be of type integer. That's the first thing. And then the second thing, we need a variable um, for our temp. If you remember correctly, we need a temp variable that's going to, we're going to use to, for the swap. And that must be the same type as whatever's in the array. This is an array of strings. So I'm going to make S temp of type string. Okay, so let's go. So we're going to have a forced for loop for k equals. We're going to go from one till, if you see here, till. The number of elements in the array minus one. And we know that there's R player count elements in this array. We're going to go from R player count to one before the end. And then I'm going to have another for loop that goes from whatever one after the K value. So K plus one. And that's going to go till R player count right to the end, not, not minus one. So there we go. There's our first two loops begin end and now what we're going to do is we're going to check if the value in k is bigger than the value in l so k is going to be looping through the array l is going to be looking through the array so if our array players so instead of array we're going to have the name of our array which is array players at position k if it is greater than array players at position l then we know that they're in the wrong order and that greater than symbol you can see it there, greater than. That indicates that we're doing ascending order. Ascending order. If we wanted to do descending order, we would just do that. Okay, so there's a little quick little note. If we find they're in the wrong order, then we need to swap them around. And the way we swap them around is we record one in our temp. Then the way I remember is you just go, the K goes down there and the L goes down there and the temp just loops around. So we're going to first record the value that's in array players at position k so we've recorded the value at position k now i can change the value at position k because i recorded its initial value so i'm changing it to whatever's in the value at position l 
So we record the value of position k, and now I can change position k's value, because I recorded it, to whatever's in L. And now I can change whatever's in position L to what originally was in k, which was s temp. So that is our, basically our little swap. Let's just make this a bit smaller so it looks a bit nicer. So this is the end of my for loop. For loop. And this is the end of my if. Okay. So if they're in the wrong order, then do a little swap. And this algorithm should work. Um, they also asked me to say, what did they say? They said, please display a message that it was sorted correctly. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to say, hey, message this is sorted and there's no way for me to actually check it because there's no way there for me to display it. so i'm actually just for interest sake i didn't ask for this but i'm going to do it anyway i want to actually see that it is sorted and i'm going to say for i'm going to use that k integer again because that loop is finished so we can use it again yeah we can reuse the k variable we're going to go from r till r player count and I'm just going to say whatever's in the display dot lines dot add just display the value in the array players position R, position K, sorry. There we go. So there we go. So just clear the array, or clear the memory control and just display all the values in the array again. I'm just doing that so that I can see that it actually did that uh, sort correctly. Now the key to this is you can't sort the array unless you've loaded the array. So just remember, this won't work because we, there's nothing in array players because we first got to load the players. So there it's now been loaded. Now we will click on sort and it says it's sorted. Look at the order at the moment. When I click OK, it's going to read up ah, there. Ooh, that looks nice. It's all in alphabetical order. And just to prove to you, if I change that to a less than symbol, and I did the exact same, just by doing that one little change, one little change, boom, load the players, now sort it, it's sorted, now it's in descending order, yeah, hey, that's cool. If they wanted me to sort by team, okay, if they wanted me to sort by team, then what you would do is over here, before you do the comparison, what I would do is I would say get, so I would have a S team K and S team L variable, and I would then extract s team k would equal whatever the team so you would extract if you remember correctly if that's what it's called that's what the values in the array is called so each value in the array looks like this so i would extract the team name into sk1 or sk and then i would extract it in skl and get the value at position so that would work with array players K, you extract that part, and then, and then you would extract the value at array players K at L for this one. I'm actually going to do this quickly and just populate ahead quickly. So I'll, to save time, I just went ahead and extracted. So S team K, we want to extract just the team name. This is not for the question. This is a special case if they wanted you to sort just by the team name. So we want to then when we do the comparison, we want to compare just that part of the value in the array. So I first extract it. What did, how do I extract it? Well, I copied from the position of the bracket, open bracket plus one. So start copying there. And I just copied for 100 places. So it copies the whole thing. Now, you don't need to worry about the actual bracket at the end. It doesn't really affect your, your sort. But if you wanted to, you could delete just the last value. So it'll delete whatever's in SK at position one. Just delete it. So team S, or S team K will be whatever's the value at position array players K. And you do the exact same thing. But in this case, you're using array players L for S team L. So now you've got the team just the team name for the value at position K in the array and just the team name at the position L in the array. And then you compare those two. You've checked the first one at position K first, if it's greater than the one at position L. If it is in the wrong order, then you swap. Then you don't need to extract and then you just swap the whatever's in the value at K and L. So you keep all that the same. So this is the only part that's new. And then there and there. So that's to sort by the team name if it's some part of the array so let's test it so when we load players that load space now when i sort i'm not sorting by players i'm sorting by team name so when i click on sort it says sorted 
You'll notice that the names are not in alphabetical order, but if you look at the teams there, it's first the B teams, then the C teams, then the D, then the E, and so on. So it's sorted now by the team name, because we extracted the team first and compared that before we did the swap. So that's how you do, well, that's special ways of doing a sort algorithm. If you missed the previous questions in this video series, go look them up on our YouTube channel as well as other videos on Delphi and RT and cat related content. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long way.